This video tutorial is brought to you by Kaching Retail. Kaching, making your till ring. During retail assessments performed by Kaching Retail over the past 6 to 12 months, particular trends were identified within independent retailers. Kaching Retail use a unique scoring system to help retailers visualize areas which they perform well and perform less well. The scoring not only draws focus for the business owner, but allows them to make improvements, measure their score and relate it to increased turnover. Before you now is a visual interpretation of the lowest scoring or weaker performing areas within these assessments. The larger the word, the more stores that demonstrated a low score for that particular retail or marketing practice. The purpose of this video tutorial is to highlight some of these typically weaker areas of retailing in order that you can look to improve your own performance and not make the same mistakes. Steps required to address these lower scores are typically no more than focus. However, failure to address them can result in lost sales, opportunities and customers choosing to shop with your competitors. This video tutorial is the first of a two-part series covering the key underperforming areas. Video 1 will cover the 7 greatest sins of independent retail. Why buy from us? Often, independent retailers will have great reasons why customers should shop with them, rather than big supermarkets, high street brands or the internet. The challenge, however, is how they communicate these great reasons to their prospective customers. For sure, a customer that has a one-to-one -one conversation with the business owner may learn some of them. But what about your typical customer, rushing in and out on a wet Tuesday afternoon when you're busy serving at the counter? What reasons are they given to shop with you? The first step to address this is to identify what exactly your USP is. A USP is your unique selling point. What is special and unique about your store experience? Why should I spend my hard-earned money with you and not somebody else? You might say we stock unique lines, we make our food on the premises, we stock locally sourced goods. Whatever your reason is, it must be firstly unique, i.e. not available anywhere else locally, and secondly, needs to be communicated to me. Is your USP on the walls of your store, on the back of the price tickets, behind the staff at the counter, top and bottom of your promotional posters, on the hold music for your phone? If not, it's possible that your customers would not be aware of your USP. Think of some strong USPs retailers use. Every little helps. Never knowingly undersold. They are communicated everywhere throughout the store to remind us. Window displays. For most businesses, window displays are the primary method in which prospective customers see your product offering and decide whether you are a suitable place to shop or not. A window display's job is to attract, to excite and to entice customers into your store. Big brands spend big money on window displays. Not out of choice, but out of necessity. They know a killer window display will draw people into their store. I will often refer to a window to my clients as a company's billboard. When you think of an expensive billboard and how we might use it, we start to think about scale, big text, big images. We think carefully about what we want to say. Is there a call to action or something that will get the customers to do as a result of this billboard message? Does the billboard communicate a specific offer or a promotion? Is it seasonal? When you compare your window to a billboard, you will often spot the common mistake independent retailers make. They focus purely on it being a pretty collection of their products. Although this might make it for a pleasant bit of window shopping for a passerby, the hundreds or thousands of cars that typically drive through a town or village centre on a day see absolutely nothing. If it's not big and bold, your message probably hasn't been told. Who are we? If you've gone to great lengths to give your customers a great retail experience, make sure they know who they're shopping with. It might seem like such an obvious statement, but it's remarkable to see how many stores you can shop in and once inside, you have no idea at all who you're shopping with. It is as simple as telling them where they are shopping. Signage on the walls, branded price tickets, branded posters, staff in uniforms, all contribute to telling, or certainly reminding a customer where they are. Why is this important? Well, creating a memorable retail experience is a powerful psychological tool. 
when most of what we are exposed to on a daily basis gets tuned out by our brains, shouting about where you are when you get a great experience is essential. Primary internal signage. This seems to be something that many independent retailers overlook and results in their stalls feeling less professional and being harder to navigate around. The signage works on a number of levels. Clearly helping customers to find products themselves makes sense, certainly in most circumstances. However, the additional benefit is that you are constantly communicating to the customer the wide range of products and services that you offer in store. Too often a customer will enter your store focusing only on what it is they've come in to collect. They are virtually blind to all the other products and services you have displayed around them. Internal signage can on occasions make these other products stand out, constantly reminding them of the range of goods that are available in your store. This type of signage should feature at a high level, perhaps around the top of the interior walls. It can be vinyls fixed directly to the wall or printed signage on Fomex board or similar. Number five, music. Music works on many levels in our store. It might be a soundtrack or a background ambience for the store, but it can also be a driver of customer behavior. Despite the investment required in PRS or PPL licensing, I believe a store can use music to create a more favorable retail experience and stimulate sales. Research into the use of music in retail and leisure environments has highlighted that music genre communicates to a customer whether they belong in a particular environment or not. An antique shop or gallery playing classical music might put off some youngsters from entering. Similarly, a high fashion store playing loud chart, dance or indie music might communicate to an older, non-target customer, this isn't the place I will find clothes for me. Although it seems counterproductive that you would want to put customers off entering your store, targeting the right customer is sometimes as important as targeting customers in general. The tempo of a song or music playing will influence the speed in which customers travel through your store. Typically, slower music will make us travel slower through a store. Music can also alter our perception of time. If you are waiting in a queue when music isn't playing, it can feel much longer than when there is. Finally, experiments have indicated that music used to contextualize a product, French music in a wine aisle for example, can actually drive sales of a product without a customer consciously being aware of it. I've experienced stores playing the radio and having competing stores advertising their store. With music having so much influence on our behavior, I believe that virtually all stores should use it and take control of the music they play by using CDs, MP3 players or computer control playlists. The most important thing to remember about music in your store is that it's not for the entertainment of the staff. Number six, promotions and offers. Promotions and offers work on a number of levels, driving customers' behavior in store. Firstly, they create urgency and can get customers to bring forward purchases, take action there and then to gain additional value or to avoid losing out. Promotions can also eliminate a phenomena known as buying pain. Independent shops, unfortunately, have a reputation of being expensive or certainly more expensive than supermarkets and internet sellers. This is often not the case. But these preconceptions prime us as consumers and make us shop with a restrictive or limiting behavior. Seeing strategically placed offers and promotions throughout a store tells this part of the brain that this store represents great value and that it should relax and shop as if it was in a value store or a supermarket. Promotions do not exclusively have to be price-led. Bulk buys and promotions around scarcity, i.e. when it's gone, it's gone, are also incredibly effective. Finally, number seven, data capture. Taking customers' names, addresses, and email details is crucial for businesses to take control of their footfall. Typically, additional footfall is the primary objective customers have when recruiting Kaching Retail to help them. With a perception that fewer and fewer people are shopping locally, attracting people into the store is considered to be the number one challenge that businesses face today. 
I have mixed views regarding this, but acknowledge that in some towns and villages, changing shopping habits have resulted in customers not visiting local stores, as they may have done in the past. Having a stack of names, addresses and email addresses gives you the power. It gives you the power to respond when footfall is low. You can call up regular customers, try and do some business over the phone. You can organise an event or a promotion at very short notice. Having customers' details gives you power and control. I would also consider Facebook, Twitter and other social media fans or connections to be a database, as they also give you scope to promote and communicate to customers at relatively short notice. OK, in summary, these topics are an overview of areas independent retailers could improve their performance in pursuit of greater turnover. This video tutorial program was brought to you by Kaching Retail. Kaching, making your till ring.